Hi everybody, it's Franny, and look who we have back! It's Lemon Drop! So you remember from the older episodes with the VW Beetle, this is it. And we have a few things to do with Lemon this time around. We have brakes we want to do, we have a new distributor, uh, I'm going to be working on the shift linkage a bit, and a few other odds and ends that we just need to take care of on the car. Well, I think I'm going to start with the brakes. Uh, it's kind of the most important bit, so let's go ahead and get those brakes sorted. The owner of the car was telling me that the brake pedal goes almost all the way to the floor before it really starts to engage. I took the car out and drove it around a little bit, and he's absolutely right, and it doesn't really feel solid. It just feels kind of mushy. So we're going to be doing a couple of things. We'll go through and adjust the brakes first. And then I think we should bleed the system as well. There could be some air in the system and see if it feels okay. And if it doesn't, we'll have to continue from there and see what else we need to do. Before I get to the adjustment, let's go ahead and do a full inspection. We'll jack up the car and pull the wheel off and pull that brake drum off. I have a sneaky suspicion that we've got some problems in there. So my point in doing this is just to get a general idea of the condition of this whole system. And I know that this car has been restored not too awfully long ago. So I do expect these parts to be fairly new and looks like they are. But what we're seeing here is a little bit of schmutz down here. And it's possible, and quite probable actually, that this wheel cylinder is weeping a little bit. Yeah, the bottom of that shoe doesn't look so great either. This is the top shoe. You can see how it's nice and shiny for the most part. All the way through, looks nice and clean and dry. And that's good. And the underside looks pretty similar, at least on that side. Well, it doesn't look too bad, but we certainly have got something going on here. Look at all this schmutz that's down here. And look at all the grease there. And the crusty's sort of up on the top of that, that gasket there. We'll take a look at this, and we can see it's all wet in here. See all that in there? That tells me that this wheel cylinder is weeping. And that would explain why this wheel is not working 100%. Well, I'm just cleaning away here. I've removed both the shoes to get started. And we can see we've got wetness from pretty much here all the way over. So this is really a mess. And what I'm using here is just some royal purple. It works pretty well, actually, surprisingly well. Super green works really well also. And I'm using this instead of brake cleaner right, in, right at the beginning here because brake cleaner is pretty expensive and pretty stinky. And this is doing a great job. I'll finish up with some brake cleaner when we've got this completely clean. Well, this has turned into a bit of a job, huh? So I'm gonna go ahead and clean everything in here, and I think we're gonna look into either a rebuild kit for this cylinder, or maybe just a new cylinder. They're probably not very expensive at all, and probably a lot easier just to replace it. In addition, I'm gonna be cleaning all of the adjusters as well to make sure they work perfectly, because it's so hard to adjust these things if your adjusters are frozen. You just can't do it, and it just, it's been such a pain. We're also missing the little rubber boots that go on the back here. There should be a little rubber boot on each side of this so that there isn't a lot of water coming into the brake system. So we need to get a set of those as well. And I'll also take a good look at those bearings as well. I need to clean them as well. So it's just a bunch of cleaning work. And then from here, I think what we need to do is jack up the other side of the car and put it up as well and take a look because I'll bet you it's just as bad as this one. So here's the butcher's bill for the two front wheels. We know we have a leaky cylinder on the right wheel. When I took the left one apart, it was dry, so that's good. But I still wanted to pull it out. I wanted to check the bearings and everything else, and it's a good thing I did. So going back to the right wheel, the bearings on it are absolutely shot. I mean, I've never seen 
I've never seen bearings this bad before. They're just completely chewed up. And the races inside the actual drums here, they're bad as well. So they're gonna have to be replaced. So we've got bearings, we've got races, we've got brake pads. Now we have like one good brake pad on each side, which is funny, but this one's been soaked a bit. And so I don't wanna put it back in. On the left side of the car, we have one that looks okay-ish, but I don't know if you can kind of make this out, but it's nice and shiny there and very dull here because it's never even hit this section. I mean, they were so out of adjustment that this whole section of the brake pad never even got touched. So it's super thin on this side, really thin here and normal thickness here. So it looks like we're in it for pretty much almost everything actually, wheel cylinders, bearings, and our brake pads as well. Oh, there was one other casualty as well. So the owner, Jerry, said, you know what, the speedometer stopped working a while ago. And that would be this little guy. So this is the little drive dog that goes on the inside of this cap and locks in here like that. And then there's a little circlip there that holds it on. And this is supposed to be attached to the speedometer cable. So it obviously snapped. So we need a new speedometer cable as well. That's pretty much it for the front brakes. I haven't even gotten to the back ones yet. So they're kind of a pain to take off. They have these big, huge castle nuts back there and a gazillion foot pounds of torque. So I think we're gonna wait on the rears until we get the front sorted. And then once the fronts are sorted, we can move back to the rears and pull those and make sure they're doing it okay as well. It's a couple days later and all the parts we ordered are in. So we've got our new brake drums here. Aren't those snazzy? Now it may seem a little overkill to replace the brake drums but one of them was a bit worn and one of them was seemed okay and I really want both sides to be pretty much exactly the same and a big plus Volkswagen parts aren't that expensive do you know how much this thing is for a 356 now of course on the 356 it's bigger and it's made out of aluminum it has a steel bit pressed in here for the actual brake drum so it's not the same part in any way but Porsche started remanufacturing brake drums for the 356 and I think they want two thousand dollars a pop for them yikes so these are like 70 or 75 or 80 dollars <laughs> <laughs> which is not much. Now the new brake drums here don't come with bearing races, but we bought a brand new set of bearings for this thing and they do come with the bearing races. So we're gonna have to pound in the new bearing races into our new drum here. It's kind of a weird process. And I was reading through John Mayer's book and looking at it online a bit, and it's, it's not quite as straightforward as you'd think. You wanna be very, very careful not to dent the top of this rim at all as you're pushing it in. If you do, then you'll jack up this surface a bit and ruin your bearings. So if you're going to press these in with a punch, you're going to probably need a brass punch and not a steel punch so you don't mushroom the top of this thing. So I have a couple of possibilities for this. One possibility is to warm up your brake drum that will expand this center bit a bit and then you can get your your race in a little bit easier. The other possibility is to freeze your races. You can put them in the freezer overnight so they're just good and cold. And they're a lot easier to get in because they're just quite a bit smaller. They've shrunk quite a bit. If you're gonna heat your brake drums, be careful how you do it. If you use a torch or something and heat it up in certain areas and get it just really hot in localized areas, you risk warping this thing. And then that's just gonna cause you a fuss down the road. You don't want that. Now I suppose you could put it in the oven and cook it for a bit and get it good and hot. That's not a bad way to go either. The other thing I read, which I thought was absolutely brilliant was, on your old brake drums, you of course already have the race in here and it's trashed because that's the reason you're replacing the, the bearings anyways. Go ahead and push those out with, a, with the punch. It really doesn't matter. You don't have to be too nice to them. Just get them out of your brake drum. And then once you have them out, you take a grinding wheel and grind down maybe a mill or so or a couple of mills all the way around so that it would just plunk, 
plop right in. The reason you're doing that is so that you can use the old race as a drift for the new race. So that way it's exactly the right size and you're gonna evenly contact the whole surface and there's much less chance you're gonna mushroom it. I thought that was pretty awesome. We're ready to press our race in, but it's super important to get the bearing pointed in the right direction because these are conically shaped bearings. So they kind of only go in one way. All right, so the trick is that the bearing points towards the center. So from the top, it's going to point down and from the other side, it points up like this. Or if you want to think of it, the two bearings sort of point towards each other when they're installed. So just install the races appropriately so the bearings are pointing towards each other. Well, after soaking this for a while, let's see if we can get it in. Make sure our bearing is pointed down and put our drift over the top of this and then start banging it in. See if it wants to go in. Yeah, it's going in. Oh, that's the sound we're looking for. All right, it's all seated. And of course our bearing goes in like this. Well, this is really the ticket here. These guys are great. They make a perfect drift for these things. Now we can turn it over and do the other race. Now I've been soaking the smaller race as well. Boy, you can really tell when it seats. That's a very different noise. And our little bearing goes in like that. Now the other thing I did for these holes to prep them was just to clean them and put a slight coating of oil on them. That'll also help a little bit as well. Now the second drum is gonna be just like this. We've got to install the races in it. So let me go ahead and get that done. Then we can get back to installing the brakes. Back at the hub here, we've got all of our parts set up. We've got all of our new bits. We got new springs and these little guys and new little retainers and pins and all sorts of stuff. We also have a brand new brake cylinder cylinder here as well. We've cleaned all this up really well. I used a wire brush and lots of brake cleaner and cleaned it all up. The inner surface right here is where our seal is going to run. So you want to make sure that that's super smooth and feels great. If there's any nicks or anything in it, then that's going to allow grease from the bearings to push through here and get into your brake system. So that's uh, gonna be super bad. This feels nice and feels nice and smooth. So I think we're all good here. In addition, you wanna take a look at how your brake shoe is actually going to move in here, in and out a little bit, and find the points here, 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 and here, that it's actually going to ride on. Now we need those points cleaned and we're gonna to have to lubricate them. With our backing plate all clean and all set here, let's get to this wheel cylinder here. It's held on by a bolt in the back and we also have to take the brake line off. But I wanna show you something about this brake line. We'll take a look at this. This is our soft line back here and look how tight that thing is. It's even pulling on the bracket over here. And this wheel could turn a smidgen more to the left. That is just terrible. And underneath here, we've got a few cracks and splits in the hose itself. So this line definitely needs to be replaced. All right, so we're gonna be taking that off. And then also there's a bolt back here that we have to take off right here in order to get our wheel cylinder off. Now I'd love to use a flare nut wrench on this, which is really the correct tool for a fitting like this, but the brake bleeder is right next to it and I can't, I, I just can't get the wrench in there. There it goes, all right. Well, I'm gonna loosen up our brake cylinder here first. This is just a 13 millimeter here, nothing special. What I'm hoping is, yeah, that I can take this through and unscrew it this way. There we go. That makes life a lot easier. Now we're gonna lose a little brake fluid and I've got a rubber plug to put on this. There we go. Okay, looks like we can continue to clean a little bit around this. So let's go ahead and install our new wheel cylinder. It's pretty simple, it just goes through here and we just reattach our bolt onto the other side. There we go. 
Next, I'm going to hit our friction surfaces around here with a little bit of never sleeves just to add a little lubrication. Now you want to be careful, don't add too much. You don't want to lather it on because any grease that gets on the shoes will render the brake pretty much worthless. So we just want the lightest coating. Next, I want to do the same for our little star adjusters. Now they sit in here and I've cleaned this all very well, but we want to make sure we lubricate these threads in here as well because the last thing you want is this thing to get stuck and also the barrel of this a little bit as well. There it goes, okay, there we go. Looking at our new brake shoes and one of the old brake shoes, they're a little bit different. Notice this notch that's here is missing on the new one, but the ends of them look the same. So I think we're good, we're, we're, we're gonna be fine, I think, but we're just missing notch. We don't need the notch for anything except that it orients the pad. So just take a look at the sort of cut that's up there and notice that that is on the other side of the notch. We're gonna test our orientation here. Everything looks pretty lined up. We've got our adjustments set up with the high side on the outside and the low side on the inside. Pads look like they're lined up pretty well. That looks really good. Next, what we want to do is put a little bit, just a kiss of never sleaze on these surfaces. Anything in here that's going to rub back and forth, we just want a little bit of something on them. Now it's critical you don't get anything on the actual brake pad surface. So just try to be as clean as possible. All right, okay. Make sure you wipe your hands down good. Make sure that they're nice and clean at this point. Next, we're gonna install the springs. The big spring goes towards the cylinder and the littler guy goes towards the adjusters. So just pop it in here, kind of snaps in. There we go. Little guy there like that, we'll pop that guy in. And then just insert it into the bottom pad as well. There we go. We start with our springs in. We don't put our pads on and then try to hook the springs in. That's virtually impossible with this type of design. So you're like, well, how do you get these things on if the spring's holding them together? So this is what you do. Put them in on the top here like that, all right? And then just sort of turn the pad out a bit. Pull this one down. Hook it into the slots on both sides, and then you can rotate it into place, just like that. Now this one's gonna wanna pop out a little bit like this, and that's okay, because we have to get the pin and the clip inserted into this hole up here. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll take our new pin here, put it in from the back, all right, and I'm gonna hold it with my finger. Next goes the spring. And then finally our clip. And I find a pair of pliers works really, really well for this. You can grab hold of it like this. Take a look at that notch and take a look at where your pin is and the notch on your pin and line those up and press it in and then turn it 90 degrees. Okay, there we go. Now we can go on and turn 90 degrees. There we go. And we're clipped on. Same deal for the bottom. I'm gonna put our pin through here, the bottom, and then push our brake pad over it. Make sure we get the pin through, there we go. Put our spring on. Line it up, turn it 90 degrees, and it's set. Now we can use a screwdriver here to sort of readjust these springs a little so they sit a little more underneath and not quite as cockeyed. Pads, make sure they're kind of in the same spot, oriented. We just want to double check that the cross on this pin is sitting exactly crosswise and in its little notch it is. And same with this one down here. Now normally I would reattach our soft line to the back of the wheel cylinder at this point, but I'm not going to bother because we're going to swap those out. We'll catch that a little bit later. At this stage, it's probably not a bad idea to just hit the pads themselves with a little bit of brake clean. Now you don't want to spray it on there, but you don't want to get it everywhere. So just spray it on a nice clean paper towel and just wipe them down just in case you got some schmutz on them while you were working. And I've swapped out my gloves here because the next step is these guys. So we've got our new bearings here and we've got to grease them properly and get them set. We also have a brand new seal as well. So for the wheel bearings, I'm using actual high temperature wheel bearing grease. This happens to be red. And what you want to do to grease these bearings is you don't want to just sort of smear a little grease on it and say it's done. You want to take a good bit of grease and put it in the palm of your hand and then work it in. 
all the way around. You want to kind of bang it like this and make sure that you work it all in. Look at that. It's all gone. It takes a decent amount of grease to grease these bearings properly. So I'm also trying to force the grease in between these two rotating surfaces as well, as well as the actual rollers. And I think we're pretty good. This feels really good. It feels like the grease is wanting to squirt out. That's a good thing. We can put a bit of grease on our run in here as well. And we can lay our bearing in. Feels lubricated all around. We can pack in a bit more grease. Now at this point, your hands or your gloves look like this and they're an absolute mess. And this is one of the best things about gloves. First of all, you shouldn't have this stuff on your hands anyways, really. It's petroleum products, not a great thing. But the best part is I can go ahead and tear these gloves off, my hands perfectly clean and just put on another set of gloves. Huge time saver. Now with our bearing completely greased and looks awesome in here, we can bang in our new seal, our new grease seal for the back here. All right, there we go. I want to clean off any grease around the outside here. We don't want that anywhere near our actual brake. Now for the other side, basically the same deal, but just with our little baby bearing here. And it goes in there, and so it's very cute, this little bearing. It should take a little less grease, but should still, still take a decent amount. A little grease on our run here. We can pop our bearing in there for a minute. Swap out our gloves. At this point, we have a little bit of a decision to make, actually, believe it or not. Volkswagen recommends that you pack the inside of that hub almost completely with grease. That's an awful lot of grease. Remember, of course, the axle's going to move through there as well. I think the idea is grease, as it gets hot, gets a lot thinner and tends to flow better, and having a little reservoir back there actually helps. So I think that's the concept, at least. I'm going to go ahead and throw a bit more in there and I'm also going to grease up our shaft here a bit just so there is a little more grease. Grease is fairly cheap. It's not expensive. So it's not like it's an expensive, oh my gosh, this is like $20 worth of, it's not like that. You just want to make sure that these bearings will last as long as possible. So I'm going to pull my little bearing out again and I'm going to just put a bit inside here, inside the cavity and replace our bearing. We want to make sure our bolt is at the ready and also the big washer that goes on as well. Now the next thing is a bit of house cleaning again. We've been fussing with this thing and getting grease all over everything. So a nice clean towel here. We want to spin this around and we want to get this inner surface spotless clean again. Okay, that's great. Now we'll go ahead and hoist our drum back up slide this whole guy in watch the bearing it's going to want to come out there we go push it in there we go put a bit more grease in here i'm going to pack this this volkswagen says you just can't have too much grease evidently next we can put our big flat washer on and it's indexed obviously with that little tab and i believe the little volkswagen emblem goes to the outside so that's the way it was when i took it off there we go look at all that grease next is our nut okay our next step is going to be to torque down on this guy um, 10 or 12, maybe foot pounds or so. You want to actually kind of tighten this up a bit. There we go. You got that tight. Go ahead and rotate this a bit. We're just trying to get the bearings to seat. We're not going to leave it there. All right. Now maybe a little bit more. See if we can get it a little tighter. Okay. Once you've spun it around a bit, several times and you're pretty happy with it. Feels pretty good. We're going to back it off. And the idea is this big washer that we've got back there, we want to be able to move it around a little bit. And it should be, it should take a little bit of force to move, but you should be able to move it with a screwdriver. So that's a little loose, I would say. And that feels pretty good. It should just give as you're pushing on it with the screwdriver. And there it is, working back and forth. And once you're happy with that, go ahead and lock down this bolt here. That'll keep this from turning. 
There we go. At this point, all that's left is to put our center cap back on. Now, once again, do you put a ton of grease in here or not? You don't want to put in so much that it just squirts out and goes everywhere, but I do like to put a bit of grease around this. It just makes me feel a little bit better. I think the bearings last a little longer. I kind of glob this guy up with grease. You can even put some inside your cup if you want to as well. So why is it always the last task that gives me the most grief? Anyway, I tried and tried and tried to get that thing on, but it's just a little too tight and it will not go on. Well, a little change of plans. I wanted to put on this new one because it was new, right? And it looked nice and the old one looks all beat up and busted up. It's been hit a zillion times with a hammer. It's all dented. <laughs> it just will not fit. It will not go on. I've been banging and banging and banging. There's no way it's going to go on. And I'm afraid, oh, you'd never get it off if I finally did get it on. Holy cow. I don't know how you'd get it off. So let's see if we can get the original one back on. It could be this new hub. Let's see. Oh yeah, much better. Well, there we go. And that's the way it should go on. It should just sort of slide on and seat all the way around and be even. I don't know what's the deal with these. They're evidently just out of tolerance. So that's a bummer. Normally our next step would be to adjust the brakes. The problem is that the shoes sort of need to shift back and forth a little bit in there and seat properly. So you kind of have to hit them a couple of times with the brake pedal, get them to seat, then come back and go ahead and adjust them. Cause we ran those adjustment stars all the way down. So these are very much out of adjustment at this point. But since I can't get to that right now, let me just go ahead and get to the other side and put the other side back together. Before we get started on the left front wheel here. Take a look at this. So notice anything missing? Yeah, that would be the speedometer cable. Let's go ahead and get the speedometer cable installed. The speedometer cable was reasonably straightforward to install. Just disconnect it from the back of the speedometer there. Then work the new cable down through the hole that you see the old one in and pull the old one out of the back of the hub and then insert the new one into the back of the hub. Now, the only thing that gave me any real grief was that rubber grommet. Boy, that was a bear. And I used enough silicone grease on it and I finally got it to go in. With the speedometer cable installed, it was time to get back to the left front wheel and get the rest of the brake parts and bearings installed. Got all that done, it's the same as the right side with the single exception that the speedometer cable goes through the little hub on the outside and then there's a little circlip that holds it on. The owner brought by some new soft lines for the brakes, so we're all set to install these, but check this out, I wanna show you something. Look at the length difference. Okay, so we'll line this up rubber to rubber and look at the bottom of that. It's almost like an inch and a half longer so yeah these are totally the wrong ones first of all and they're old and hard these are nice and soft so I feel a lot better with new soft lines on the car since we have no swivel on this end we're going to install this end first while the other end is still free and we can turn the entire hose let's pull our plug out here all right run this guy in by hand tilt seats this is weirdly a little difficult to get to all right, I'm gonna snug this up. The problem is that the bleeder here is in the way. I'm gonna interrupt myself here. I think a better way to tighten this thing down is with a crow's foot. You do wanna be careful not to bend the bleeder here. It's so easy to kind of come down on it and bend it. So that's why I'm trying to be ultra careful here. We've got our soft line coming up here. Now at this end, we've got a clip that we need to pull off here and we've got our hard line connection here. And while this is all together, let me go ahead and pull the hard line off first. Okay, now the clip off. Okay, there we go. All right, let's get our new line started here. Okay, there we go. That's a good start. Wow, that's a decent amount of brake fluid. Holy cow. Okay, we'll tighten this back up. There we go, not too awfully tight. Doesn't need to be super duper tight. At this point, we just need to put our clip back on. And that's our soft line installed on the right side. The left side's the same. Let me just go ahead and pop that one in. 
Those look a lot better. Let's see if we've got enough clearance. Turn the wheel all the way to the left. There we go, it's at its stop. And <laughs> see, those other lines were just too short. This is way better. I think everything looks great here. Normally the next step would be to go ahead and bleed the brakes and we got obviously a ton of air in the system, but I really wanna to get to those back wheels and get started on those. So let's go ahead and position the car and take the rear wheel off and see how the rear brakes are. Well, this episode's getting a little long in the tooth, so I'm gonna cut it off here. I did get to the back wheels, but oh my gosh, there were a lot, a lot of issues back there. So that's going to be the next episode. And speaking of that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that now. Hit the little bell next to it to get notified because we've got lots more content on the Beetle coming up and then we got to get back to the 911. We've got an interior to put in and we have to get that engine back in. So you're not going to want to miss any of that. Oh, look at that. The wheel's back on. Huh. All right. Well, thank you so, so much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please give it a thumbs up. If you've got questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below and I'll get right to them. Thank you so, so much. And as always, a special thank you to our Patreon supporters. Until next time, safe travels. Bye.